Hey guys, my name is Fazan Khan and welcome to the second part of this email sender application. In the previous part, we completed our GUI and now let's work on the functionality part of some of the buttons. First one is this exit button, the easiest one. Let's first do the functionality of this button. Once I will click on this button, I am getting this message box. It is asking confirm if you want to exit. If I will click no, nothing will happen. But if I will click yes, this window will be closed. So let's add this functionality. So I want whenever I will click the exit button, some function should be called. For that, I will provide a command to this exit button. So I am moving it to a new line. And here I will pass a command equals to I exit. This is a function that I need to define. So at the top, I will define all my functions just after this import line. So here I'll write def I exit. And firstly, I want to display a message box. So in order to display a message box, we need to import it. So from tkinter, we can import that message box. So I'll write from tkinter import message box like this once you import this message box now you can use the method which is present inside this message box so we can use that with the help of this message box so i'll write message box dot ask yes no this is the method first thing we need to pass the title so title here will be notification after that we need to pass the message so message will be do you want to exit? So this ask yes no method will return either true or false. If you will click yes, it will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. So that true or false value I will store in some variable result. Then I will check if result is true or not if it is true this if condition will become true and whatever code that i'm going to write inside it that code will be executed so what i'm going to do here i'm simply going to close my window so in order to close your window you have to use the object variable of our window which is root dot destroy method and you can also mention the else part in the else part you can simply pass so if you'll select no nothing will happen so it will simply pass if you'll click yes then your window will be destroyed means it will be closed let's run so if i click on this exit button it is asking me do you want to exit if i say no nothing will happen it will simply pass if i say yes this window will be destroyed so this was the functionality of the exit button it was an easy functionality now the next functionality that we need to do is of this clear button so whenever i will click on this clear button everything from this text area from this entry field and this entry field should be deleted so as i click on this button everything is getting deleted from here right so let's see After this I exit function, I'm going to define another function which will be clear. So inside this function, firstly, I will clear everything from the to entry field. So I'll use to entry field object variable dot delete method. And from the start till end, I will delete everything. After that, from subject entry field, I have to delete everything. So again, I'll use the delete method and from start till end, I will delete everything. Then I need to delete everything from the text area as well. So I'll write text area dot delete. And here we need to pass the indexing from 1.0 till end. So in the case of text area, the ind indexing starts from 1.0 and it goes till end. So from 1.0 till end, I will delete everything. So after defining this function, 
now i need to call this function so i will be calling this function from the clear button that we created here to this clear button i'm going to pass a command and the command will be nothing but the function that we just defined without parenthesis now if i run it and if you write anything inside these entry fields and this text area and when you will click on this clear button everything is getting deleted from here right now here you can see both the radio buttons are selected but if you see the original project here only one radio button is selected so single is selected by default and another thing is this browse button is disabled in the start so i will be disabling it so here i have created this browse button so i'm going to provide it a keyword argument which is a state and the state will be disabled initially so now if i run it you will see that the browse button is disabled initially and now let's select only one radio button so in the previous video i made one mistake so here you can see i have created two string variables single variable and multiple variable i just have to create one variable so this variable will be choice so i'll change it to choice and from here and here at both these places i have to give the same variable name which is choice so in both these radio buttons only one variable will be passed which is choice so what this variable will do it will simply store the value so in case of single radio button it will store this value and in case of multiple radio button it will store multiple value so this variable can be used to distinguish whether you have selected single radio button or multiple radio button so here i am going to initially select the single radio button so i am going to use this choice variable and i am going to set it as single because that is the value right so to this set method if you pass the value as single it will select single radio button if you will pass value multiple it will select multiple radio button let's see so now you can see only single radio button is selected here after that let's work on the functionality of this speak button so whenever i will speak something that text should be entered inside this text area let me show you in my original project how it works so when i will click on this speak button firstly you will hear a sound after that whatever i will speak that text will automatically be typed inside this text area my name is fazan khan i am a software developer so this way you can compose your email so let's see the functionality of this button firstly i am going to provide a command to this button speak button so whenever you will click on this speak button this particular command will be called and i'll simply give the command name as speak this is nothing but the function name so let's define it i will be defining just after this import line def speak so what is basically happening whatever i am speaking that is getting converted into text so to convert your audio into text we can use a module so go to your terminal here you need to type pip install speech recognition this is the module that helps us to convert speech into text after installing this next we need to install pygame module so you need to write pip install pygame a pygame module contains one another module which help us to play any music 
so once these two modules are installed now we can import them so at the top here we can import from pygame import mixer so this mixer module will help us to play any sound and after that i'm simply going to import speech recognition which will help us to convert audio into text so inside this speak function firstly i'm going to play this sound music one dot mp3 so in order to play any sound firstly we have to create instance of the mixer class so how can we do that we just have to use the module mixer dot init method you can initialize mixer outside of this function or you can do it inside this function as well both where it's fine after that you can load the music so for loading the music you can use mixer dot music dot load method and here we need to pass the file name which is nothing but music one dot mp3 after that you can play the music by using music dot play method this will simply play music one dot mp3 after the sound is played then we have to create object of the recognizer class which will help us in converting audio to text so i'm going to use a speech recognition module dot recognizer class and we have to create object of it so object variable name i'll give as sr so why do we create object of a class so that we can access the methods of this class with the help of this object variable which is sr after that we have to create object of microphone class as well so that is created with the help of with keyword which help us to avoid exceptions so with speech recognition dot microphone as m here this m is nothing but the object of this microphone class after that i'm simply going to create try and accept block so if there will be any exception that can be handled i'll simply pass that and if there is no exception whatever code that i'm going to write that code will be executed right so firstly i'm going to remove if there is any external noise so for that we have to use the object variable of the recognizer class which is sr and the method of the recognizer class which is adjust for ambient noise and to this method we have to pass the source so our voice is coming from the microphone so we have to pass the microphone object which is m this one and after that we have to pass the duration so if you are speaking some sentence so after 0.2 seconds means if you'll take a break of 0.2 seconds and after that if you'll speak anything that sentence will be treated as a new sentence so one sentence 0.2 seconds break after that whatever you will speak will be treated as, as a second sentence after that we need to listen whatever we will speak through microphone so for that we have to use another method of the recognizer class which is listen and here we need to pass the object of the microphone because we will listen through microphone and whatever we will listen i will store that in some variable audio and then again i'll use one of the method of the recognizer class which is recognize google what this will do this will simply convert our audio into text and that text i will store in some variable text and after that i will insert this text into my text area so i'll write text area object variable dot insert method and at the end i will insert this text and at the end of this text i will also add a full stop like this now if i run this code if i try to speak something i am getting some error let's see what it is okay so microphone okay so i forgot to add parenthesis here because this is a class so i have to use like this now let's run again if i click here 
I am getting another error. Let's see what it is. Could not find pi audio. Okay, so I have to install one more module. So go to your terminal again, and here you need to type pip install pi audio. So this pi audio uh, will be successfully installed if you are using Python 3.6.0 version. If you are using the latest version, which is Python 3.9, then you might get error. So please use the lowest version which is 3.6.0 and once your pi uh, audio is successfully installed you can run the code again and this time hopefully you will not get any errors my name is Fazan Khan so as you can see it is working perfectly so that's it for this video I hope you liked it in the next video, we will see the functionality of other buttons. Thank you for watching.